yeah, it's a big boat. There's a lot of <laughs> a lot of ferrying to do. I have an excellent uh, work platform here. <laughs> it's uh, the old strongback for originally building the boat. Uh, but it's heavy and I have to move it again. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. You always wish there were more hours in a day and uh, <laughs> while uh, laying on a uh, fairing compound you wish your fingers were stronger. <laughs> I've uh, managed to get a layer on here. I hope I haven't put it on too thin. Uh, looks a bit thin in some places. <laughs> but thin is good as long as it's not too thin. And I just had a visit from the yard owner and he gave me a fantastic compl compliment after having seen the, the port side. He said, a lot of finished boats aren't this good. It's not perfect. There's no way it's perfect, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. He's been building boats and renovating them for 30 years so he knows what he's talking about I will yeah continue with fairing on the inside here uh, yeah that's the plan for tomorrow more fairing fantastic <laughs> good morning Another cold but beautiful morning in in uh, yeah outside uh, Melbourne, but uh, this is what I did yesterday. Uh, I got on a thin layer of ferrum compound, and I am pretty pleased. It's not perfect as usual. I, I tried to lay it on perhaps a little too thin. I'll, I'll, I won't really know until I've uh, sanded it as flat as I can. Um, but uh, yeah, perhaps it's a little bit low on the sides of these uh, tapes. Uh, but like I said, I won't know that until I've sanded it down, because the material here, even if it's thin, it may, the material I'm going to have to sand off on the tape may actually eat up the slight dip that I have on both sides of the tape. Certainly on this side, Def not so certainly on this side. In any case, it looks like I got a really good start here. Yeah, it's a big boat. And there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of ferrying to do, but uh, moving forward with 
pretty decent speed, I think. It's perhaps not so exciting for you guys to see me sanding this boat for days and days. But uh, that's what it is. I got a delivery. Yeah, one of those fantastic love-hate things. Uh, uh, new sandpaper and sandpaper you have to change sandpaper more often than you think and every time you change to a new sheet you notice immediately how much better the result is uh, and how much easier it is to work with so instead of putting your back into it you just let the sandpaper do, do the work and uh, that helps a lot I broke my shoulder a couple of years ago in a fall so <laughs> the less work I have to do with my shoulder the better and this is an adhesive backed uh, uh, hook and loop velcro thingy and I think I may be able to modify one of the um, one of the plastering uh, plasterboard uh, sanders and put this on and uh, making that uh, a little bit stiffer that'll stop the machine from from uh, digging where I don't want it to dig see it's pretty pretty soft it's excellent uh, for many purposes but for sanding something flat for removing material in only high spots it's not the best it works if you're gentle uh, but it will always take a little bit of material also from the lows so if I can make this a little bit stiffer, then uh, I should be able to get a flatter surface faster. So I'll try and experiment a little bit with that. Uh, hopefully it works. Yeah, it should work question is if it's worth spending the time it's working quite well as uh, as it is and these rolls are for these big 3m boards and they are excellent but I'm using sandpaper and these are the last two pieces and this sandpaper has been around for a while and I've uh, <laughs> probably used all the grit they have. Also it's 60 grit, I got 40, and that'll also yeah, reduce the amount of work I need to do. And for all these dura block sanding blocks, I got all sorts of uh, adhesive backed sandpaper. In hindsight, I should have bought the dura blocks with, with hook and loop. And, uh, yeah, got a hook and loop uh, paper for that. But I didn't, so this is what I have to work with. And, uh, and this delivery is something I'm perhaps not so excited about, but it will make my life easier. Yeah, back to uh, fairing.
okay so clearly i haven't done the whole curve here but uh, i'll leave it like this for now shape that and then uh, i'll uh, do more and that's mostly so i don't uh, interfere with the stuff i've already put up uh, i was given a tip yesterday by the owner of the boatyard and he's been doing this for over 30 years so uh, I listened to him and he said if I have a little bit of a thicker mix and uh, then I use a heat gun uh, it'll spread nicer and uh, it has now <laughs> still learning it's it's hard working with a heat gun and, and the spatula at the same time but, and uh, yeah, I'm no pro, so uh, it's not perfect, but uh, it was a lot easier than uh, with no heat gun. So, uh, looking good. I will fill up here a little bit. I don't want to take this down. There's, a, there's quite a bit of a hump here, but this is uh, structural uh, glass. There's a... A lot of uh, unidirectional glass here holding the inner four stay uh, attachment point hard point so that's why that looks a bit weird i'll put a bit of epoxy there before uh, moving on to the next part of this boat so i have uh, applied fairing compound on the inside of the two halls here and uh, the forward section of the bridge deck and because I've done that of course there's a bit of an overlap with wet uh, fairing compound on on the bows or this bow in particular and I for a second figured okay then I'm a bit held up with paint but uh, no I'm not I'll just not paint all the way out here which is absolutely fine because I have to sand that inside of the hull and get paint on that so instead of moving on to putting more fairing compound in another position I've decided I'll uh, put some paint on the starboard side and putting paint on is very good <laughs> for uh, your mental health uh, when you're doing something like this my plan is to apply fairing compound here that means I have a protected hull which I can leave uh, for a long time in Australia without having any issues when I get back and, and uh, uh, once I do have the fairing comb, or sorry, the paint on, uh, if I have time before I leave, I'll come back and uh, do some more fairing uh, on top of the uh, the primer, so that the primer acts like a shield for the material which is below, and. Uh, the fairing compound I use will sand out faster than the paint, so uh, I'll have a much easier time of getting these small imperfections uh, out. So that's the plan. So first I'll mask off the uh, bootstrap like I did on the other side. and. Then I'll uh, start painting.
From the golden domes of Bulgaria I've been cold in Malaya I've been frozen